All right, now we're going to talk about designing parts for engineering simulations. So a lot of parts, a lot of times you want to create parts to manufacture or to 3D print, but you're not quite sure what's the best thickness or the best length. So in that case, you can use computer simulations to help you save material and optimize your geometry. A common case is for finite elements, which we're going to learn how to use using a free open source or free and open source are the same thing. So an open source software called FreeCAD. We already know how to install it. We already know how to use some of the commands. Um, but I want to go through FreeCAD because other softwares that you have to pay for, maybe you're not going to have the chance to use it. Versus FreeCAD, you can just install and use right away. So the first thing is we're going to create a new file. And then we're going to say either part design or sketch. I'm going to start from a sketch and then extrude the sketch. So here, type on sketch, choose what plane you're going to extrude from. So I'm going to start on X, Y plane. And I'm going to create a polyline. So I'm going to go ahead and go vertically. We're in millimeters, so there's going to be a small part. But you can change it to inches or to um, meters, whatever you want, centimeters. Okay. So we're going to go and create the part like so and then we can do our um, constraints so this one is going to be a hundred okay this one is going to be a hundred as well and this one is going to be 200 uh, it's not letting me. Let's see. It's not letting me change to 200. Is because I have already some constraints here. So what I need to do is remove some of these things and start removing the constraints. Okay. So let's see. This one is 100. Enter. This one is 20. Let's confirm this one is 20. There you go. And this one is 80. Oh, but it has to be vertical. That's why it's not letting me. So this one is a vertical distance of 80. Okay, and it's vertical, vertical, good. Okay, so far it's green, so we're having no issues there. Let's do a line which is vertical and a distance of 200. Good. Let's do another line which is going to be up to here and it's going to be um, parallel to actually no. It's going to be, let's double click on sketch, I didn't mean to exit. It's going to be parallel, or what should we do? It's going to be perpendicular to this line. Hmm, but he didn't like that. So let's see, parallel to that line. Hundred. Okay, that's full. That's a good constraint. So the distance is good enough. Let's see another line. And that line is going to be 20. Let's try and fix that here. What's going on? Let's remove this constraint and try and do it again. So I need a line to be 100. horizontal distance of 20. Where's my distance? 23. 
remove that. Ah, uh, there you go. This assigning constraints that I didn't mean to put. Okay, so now I can say 20. All right, good. So 220, 100, yes. All right. Uh, I think this is over constrained here as well. So let's remove that. Okay. All right, let's try to make another line. And this one is going to be 80. Okay, well, not really. It doesn't seem to like that at all. So you have to get used to view, you have to get used to using these constraints. Let's go ahead and use a line here, which is going to be like so, and it's going to be 200 minus 20 minus 20, so it's 140. So this one is 140. Okay, 200. Oh, sorry, 160 is 200 minus 40. So it's 160. Very well. All right, now we can close the geometry. So we're going to go ahead and close this like here, like so. Okay, so now we have no errors and we should have a closed geometry. In fact, when we Go ahead and type or check on part. We can extrude it for let's say 100 millimeters vertically, and now we have a solid. So if you have a, if you don't have a solid, it's because your geometry is not closed. You need to have a solid, a volume, a three-dimensional. Well, you can have a 2D, but in this case we're doing a three-dimensional part. If you have a three-dimensional part, it has to be completely closed to create a solid. If it's a 2D part, you also have to create a, um, uh, has to be closed geometry. You cannot, you cannot have any gaps because that will not solve the equations. All right, once you have the part, then you're ready for your FEM study. So I'll go ahead and create any part you want and go ahead and type on FEM, which is finite element method. Once you're on finite element method, you still have to choose some things. So the first thing is, as you know, once you choose finite element method, it's only going to give you access to the tab. So the first thing is going to uh, click on the analysis. The analysis is going to bring a solver, which is the end, is the last step. The first thing is going to create a material. So we're going to assign a material right now. There's no material on this volume. So let's say we want to 3D print this part. And we want to know if it's going to be a good support. So we're going to create a plastic ABS. And since it's already built in, the properties are here. The elasticity modules, the Poisson ratio, which is the ratio of the compression branch, well, the formation on one axis versus the other one, thermal conductivity, coefficients of heat and expansion, etc. If you want to create your own material, then you also can do that. But in that case, you can basically, um, well, first of all, you can choose different materials, alloys, like a steel, plastics, concrete, um, aluminum, I'm going to choose the first one, but if you say you wanted to create um, your material, you can edit the material from here, type the own value that you want, and you can name it different, but we're going to create, we're going to use this material, which is a common material for 3D printers, and the geometry is regular, is very small, dimension is 100 millimeters, it's, it's, it's only about 4 inches, so something that you can print. All right. That once you're done doing material, you can go on the list and choose your model. So you're going to have a fluid. Well, this is not going to be a fluid. This is going to be a, this is going to be a material, solid material. So don't choose that. You're going to have reinforced concrete. No, we um, need to edit the material. We're not going to edit it. You can create beam sections. You can create electromagnetic um, cases. You can have fluid going through it or around it for convection and conduction. You can create constraints. We're going to fix. So let's say we're going to solder. Well, we're going to place this on a, we're going to fix this to a base. So in that case, we're going to fix a couple of faces. We're going to fix that face, 
that one, and we're going to fix this face, that one too. So we have two faces that are going to be fixed to the base of, say, a printed board. Okay. All right. And let's say we're going to have a load supporting some type of um, fixture or some type of, of parts uh, right here. So we're going to get another constraint, and it's going to be a spring. No, we're not going to have a spring. We're going to have a force. So all this face is going to be supporting, select it. All that face is going to be supporting, uh, say, uh, a 100 newton load or a 10 newton load. I, know, I don't know if it's going to be too big. We'll have to see. And it's going to be supporting it. So say this is fixed to a board or to a printed board or to a fixture. And then you have something on top, kind of like a, a lid or, or, or this is a design that you want to support the weight of something when it's closed, etc. This is going to have a force compressing it. Okay, so now that's the bare minimum of what you need. It's going to have a fixed constraint, meaning it's not going to be able to slide left or right. It's not going to go uh, front or backwards, and it's not going to lift. It's going to be, if this was an, if this was an alloy, it would be like a solder uh, junction. But right now, we say like we have a glue or something. And then we have the force on top that is going to be supporting. You can get a material, you can get a temperature in case you want to make sure that it's not going to, if it's getting too hot, it's going to start melting, of course. But it, if it's not beyond the melting point, but it's just a little hot, it's going to lose some of the stiffness. So you can make sure that you can um, say, for instance, you can want to study the temperature effect about 310 Kelvin, which, what is that? About 40 degrees more Celsius and about what is it 85 to 90 fahrenheit i'm not sure you can do the computations but it's a little higher than ambient temperature all right so close to 100 in fahrenheit i would say okay so it's definitely not beyond the melting point abc is very thermally stable all right so we have the geometry we have the boundary conditions which is fixed and the force now we need a mesh so you can create the mesh by clicking on the part and then either NetGen mesh or GMesh. I'm going to use GMesh. If you don't have GMesh installed, you can always go for NetGen. But if you want to go to GMesh, then you can do it through your um, preferences or your add-ons and install it. If you need help on that, contact me and we'll go over the installation of GMesh. But I'm going to use GMesh actually because you can use a second order or um, quadratic function to interpolate. It's going to be much more accurate than the first order. It's going to be from the shape imported or created. The size of my mesh or the elements, you're going to see that how that looks, is going to be maximum and minimum. So remember that this length is 20 millimeters. Therefore, say the maximum length is going to be 5 millimeters. Obviously, it has to be small as that you're bigger that it has to be the maximum element has to be smaller than your smallest edge this edge is 20 millimeters so let's say five should be enough uh, well, actually 10 should be enough because it's 20 and the minimum we don't want to make it too uh, computationally intensive so let's say five if you go 0 0.1 0 0.2 it could take a few hours to mesh okay so let's say okay in um, actually, we need to say apply first, and it's gonna do the mesh. Yeah, this is a pretty coarse mesh. It's gonna be, it's not gonna be a very e nice solution, but just to show you the workflow. If you go smaller here, the mesh is gonna be much more defined, more uh, refined, and you're gonna have a more accurate solution. But this is to show you the workflow. So I'm gonna say okay. This is a not an okay mesh, but uh, probably will solve. So if you do it, if you follow me, you can make sure that you follow the workflow, but for your product, definitely get much more finer mesh, or like maybe even less than a millimeter as your minimum size and definitely around one, two millimeters for your maximum size. All right, so next step is after boundary conditions and material and the mesh, now we can finally go to your um, solver. So on your solver, the first thing is you're going to have to choose between static, meaning that is going to be the final state of your deformation, 
with your frequency, if it's vibration, or your thermomechanical, if you have changes in temperature over the time, which we don't, um, you can check the mesh. Let's check the mesh. It's probably going to tell me that it's not the best mesh in the world, but um, you can check the mesh and button. So I'm going to do a static case. Well, the first thing you're going to do is write the input file. And that file you can actually export to other softwares. So uh, let's take a look. So right now, it basically tells you that this input file you can export to Abacus, which is a final element solver for um, SolidWorks. It's a very good final element solver. You can import this file and do a lot of type of boundary conditions and very fancy stuff. The next thing you can do is check your mesh. So it's going to have all these conditions of so forces on top. It's 100 newtons or 10 newtons, etc. Actually, let's see. This is just the node. So this is the dimensions in millimeters of the nodes. So the first node has dimension of 20, 0, 0, because it's a three dimensional part. Then you have all of these x, y, and z coordinates. This is internal nodes. Uh, let's see what else is in this file. All those things are the internal nodes of the mesh, which is the point of your solution. It's a pretty big file. Well, actually, it's not as big as you would think because you can still get it larger if you redefine the mesh. But yeah, all these things are information about the mesh. This is for your constraints, which nodes are going to be fixed, and what material, the material properties, etc. Okay. So we're not going to mess with that because we don't want to ruin the file, but you can take that file to SOLIDWORKS and to Abacus. All right, so let's run the calculation. And since I didn't save it in any particular solver, uh, file or folder, it's going to be in my app data. We'll have to find it if you need to export the file. All right, let's see what this is saying. So it's basically telling me that the computation is... It, the solver is being executed with no errors so far and the results say are done okay you can see the results here you can see how it's not a very good mesh go ahead and fix your mesh if you need to so that you can make a, you can get a better result all right on your on your results you basically have your displacements meaning how much your node your your geometry deformed Okay, kind of like here. Obviously, since you have no supports in the middle, this is going to be deforming kind of like a U-shape deformation where the maximum is in the middle. Um, and let's see if you can see, calculate the stress depending on, on different things that you can choose here. So bone means this is the maximum stress, square root of the stresses in x, y, and z directions. You'll learn more about this in your uh, continuum mechanics, mechanical engineering stuff. The minimum and the maximum stresses, okay, because you have positive and negative. Um, and the important thing about this is to know how to read them. So if you go to displacements, they're at negative 2 um, range. So they're less than a millimeter. So this force is not going to be very much. This is going to be okay. 